In the 1930s, a professor at Cornell University, Clive McKay, was researching how to make animals grow bigger and faster for food production. However, he noticed that by feeding them less, the animals stayed healthier and lived longer. The topic of this video is calorie restriction and life extension. Since McKay's research, there have been dozens if not hundreds of studies showing that calorie restriction extends lifespan in virtually all species studied, such as yeast, worms, rodents and even monkeys. In 1986, a paper showed that feeding male mice 65% fewer calories extended their lifespan by up to 65% compared to the mice eating without restrictions. Now that's quite an astonishing effect. There's nothing else like this that's been shown to extend lifespan as much. But what does the science say about humans? Humans are obviously much more different than yeast or mice. The truth is that we will probably never have actual definite proof that calorie restriction will extend lifespan in humans. It's impossible to do a lifelong study in a free living human especially with something that requires so much control of food intake as calorie restriction. However, we do have some short-term randomized controlled trials looking at the effects of calorie restriction on humans. The National Institute of Aging has sponsored human calorie restriction randomized clinical trials, which are called calorie trials. Calorie studies over the last 20 years have found that calorie restriction for 6 to 24 months reduces body weight and improves cardiometabolic risk factors such as inflammation, waist circumference, and insulin resistance in both obese and non-obese individuals. The 2023 calorie intervention saw that 24 months of 25% calorie restriction resulted in a 2-3% to slower speed of biological aging, as measured by the Dunedin pace value. In other studies, that would translate to a 10-15% to reduction in mortality risk, which is comparable to smoking cessation. The accuracy of these biological age tests is still up to debate, but it would correlate with the same findings in animal studies that calorie restriction does slow down the speed of aging. The problem with the calorie studies is that most of the participants were able to adhere to only about half of the recommended calorie restriction. They were prescribed to follow a 25% calorie restricted diet, but they ended up reporting about a 10 to 12% calorie restriction. That doesn't completely discard the findings of these studies, but we just don't know what the actual effects would be if the people were to actually adhere to the 25% calorie restricted diet. Maybe the results would be even better, but we don't know. But we do have some more natural experiments over the long term of calorie restriction in humans. During World War II, the Okinawans in Japan also experienced food shortages. Okinawa had the highest life expectancy in all of Japan for decades, but since the year 2000, it's been fading. It's thought that the longevity advantage of Okinawa, seen between the years of 1949 and 1998, was the result of about a 15% calorie restricted diet during World War II. For example, in 1949, the average calorie intake in Okinawa was 1,785 calories a day, whereas in mainland Japan, it was 2,068 calories a day. In 1949, Okinawans consumed 1,785 calories a day and burned around 2,000, which resulted in an average VMI of 21. That's quite low. As the post-war period of low calorie intake passed, and they started to eat more, gain weight, and move less, the Okinawan longevity advantage has disappeared. However, the amount of centenarians in Okinawa has still been climbing. In 1975, there were only 29 people over the age of 100 living in Okinawa, whereas the number peaked at 1,271 in the year 2021. This appears to be explained by the difference between the pre-war and post-war generations, as the individuals born before World War II are reaching centenarianhood. The pre-war generation grew up on traditional food that's lower in calories, and they also experienced the period of more severe calorie restriction for a few years, which might have had long-term benefits. Although not a randomized controlled trial, the natural experiment aspect of it is still quite compelling. The Okinawans before World War II didn't have very high or exceptionally higher rates of longevity. And it appears that they gained it during the short period of food shortages during World War II. After the war, the younger generations don't have the same longevity advantage because they've transitioned to a higher calorie intake and a more westernized diet. Overall, the evidence suggests that calorie restriction certainly does improve longevity in animals. In humans, this story is a bit more complicated, but we do have randomized controlled trials also showing that calorie restriction, even in the short term, improves body weight and lowers many other risk factors for heart disease, for example. Based on the evidence, you don't need to adhere to a specific low calorie diet to live longer. You just want to make sure that you have your blood work clear and you're not overweight. Mechanistically speaking, calorie restriction turns on the body's survival pathways related to longevity, such as inhibition of mTOR, upregulation of autology, 
DNA repair, activation of oxidotranscription transcription factors, and so much more. The key aspect of doing calorie restriction for longevity is doing it without malnutrition. McKay's early experiments show that nutrient deficiencies in animals were seen to shorten lifespan even when they were fed fewer calories. Malnutrition in the elderly is associated with increased mortality. Older people are also at a higher risk of frailty if they're underweight. So calorie restriction might not be suitable for all ages. However, being normal weight perhaps more on the lower body fat side and keeping your calorie intake slightly lower appears to be beneficial to both overweight and non-overweight individuals. It's hard to say if being on a lower calorie diet would translate into longer life in humans. Of course, in many ways it can by preventing you from becoming obese and keeping your blood work and other biomarkers better. But that will also probably depend on other factors such as genetics, the environment, nutrition status, fitness, mental health, etc. What matters more is your biomarkers, your body composition and other vital markers. If you want to slow down aging and live longer, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like and subscribe for more videos about living longer and staying healthier. Thanks for watching. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.